As usual, we always wrap up each chapter looking at how the concepts of the chapter apply to functions with multiple variables. And so our question for today is going to be, how do we integrate with several variables? And since integration is really the opposite of taking a derivative, we can probably learn some lessons from how we take derivatives with several variables. When we took derivatives with several variables, what we did was we did partial derivatives with respect to one variable and treated the other variable as a constant, just a number like 7 or 12. We can do the exact same thing with integration. If we're integrating 36x squared y cubed dx, what we notice is the dx at the end tells us which variable we're integrating with respect to. We're integrating with respect to the x, which means we're going to treat the y like it's a constant. So really, all we're taking the derivative of is the x squared, which is x cubed. And then we divide by 3. 36 divided by 3 is 12. And the y cubed stays along because we're treating it like a constant. And we still need the plus c. We can also integrate dy. Let's take the same integral, 36x squared y cubed, but change it to dy. Now, since we see the dy, what that means is we're integrating with respect to the y. The antiderivative of y cubed is y to the fourth divided by 4. 36 divided by 4 is 9. And we keep the x squared like it was a constant. And of course, we always need the plus c. So this is kind of the process we'll take as we take integrals with several variables. We'll treat the other variable as a constant. But as it turns out, when we're integrating with several variables, we actually integrate both the dx and the dy with what are called double integrals. And with double integrals, what we will do is kind of like parentheses, we will start with the inside integral, then do the outside integral. And it might help to color code what you're doing, where the inner integral is one color and the outer integral is another color. I'm going to use blue and green for these examples. But if that helps you see, because problems can get a little bit crowded with double integrals. We'll be given something like the integral from 3 to 4 of the integral from 1 to 2 of 8xy dy dx. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the inner integral. And we're going to evaluate the inner integral, which says dy. So we're going to integrate with respect to y. Then we'll move to the outer integral and take the integral dx. So first in blue, that inner integral 8xy dy. So y is my variable, which means the antiderivative is y squared divided by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And the x is just a constant. And we're integrating from 1 to 2. Now, around that is still the other integral from 3 to 4 dx. But we're not really worried about that right now. So we're going to plug our limits in. Remember, we're doing dy. So 2 is equal to y. The 1 is equal to y. Keep the x. We have 4x times the y squared, which is 2 squared, minus the y squared, which is 1 squared. And again, that's still surrounded by the integral from 3 to 4 dx. Well, 2 squared is 4, minus 1 is 3. 3 times 4 is 12x. But that's all still inside the integral from 3 to 4 dx. 
Now we're ready to evaluate the outer integral dx. The antiderivative of x is x squared divided by 2 is 6. And we're going to integrate that from 3 to 4. And this time, because we did dx, that 4 is equal to an x. So we plug them in. 6 times 4 squared minus 3 squared. 4 squared is 16. 3 squared is 9. 16 minus 9 is 7. And 6 times 7 is 42 for our final answer to the double integral. Let's try another example. Let's take the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 0 to 1 of 2xy e to the negative x squared dx dy. This time, we've got the integral on the inside is dx, which means the x's are my variable. And the outside is dy. We're going to do the antiderivative with respect to y at the end. First, we just look at the inside. And one thing I notice about the inside is we've got e to an exponent. And it would be really nice if that was just e to the u. So let's make u equal to negative x squared. And with substitution, then du is negative 2x. Well, we have 2xy. So uh, we've got the 2. We need a negative. And we don't want the y. So we're going to go 1 over y and a y, negative y on the outside. When we do that, the 2xy dx, all of that, all becomes a du. And we're left with e to the u integrated from plugging the limits into u, negative 0 squared is 0. Negative 1 squared is 1. And there's a negative y on the outside. Actually, it's a negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Remember, all of that is still sitting surrounded by the outside integral. We're just kind of ignoring it right now, 0 to 1 dy. But we're still evaluating the inter integral. The inner integral is e to the u integrated from 0 to negative 1. It's still multiplied by the negative y. And still around it is the integral from 0 to 1 dy. We're not really paying attention to that yet. So we've got negative y times e to the negative 1 minus e to the 0 surrounded by the integral from 0 to 1 dy. Well, what's nice about e to the negative 1 and e to the 0 is that that's just a constant. There's no y's in that. So we can actually pull that part completely out of the integral, giving us e to the negative 1 minus, well, e to the 0 is 1. And we're just integrating. Actually, let's pull the negative sign out also. That's also a constant times y dy. Well, that gives us negative e to the negative 1 minus 1 times y squared integrated from 0 to 1 times 1 half. So if we plug that in, we've got negative e to the negative 1 minus 1. Let's bring the 1 half out front, actually, times y squared is 1 squared minus 0 squared. Well, 1 squared minus 0 squared is 1, and anything times 1 is just 1. So we're left with negative 1 half e to the negative 1 minus 1. 
for our final answer. So there's a lot to keep track of with these. That's why I always try and color code. The inner integral I do in one color, the outer integral doing it in another color helps me keep track of what's happening where. Let's try um, looking at a slight variation of this, though. Doing integration this way does allow us to not just integrate from 0 to 1 or from 3 to 4. We can also integrate with what are called variable limits, where rather than numbers, we're plugging variables in when we evaluate the antiderivative. So now you might see a problem like the integral from 0 to 2 of the integral from 0 to 3x of xy squared dy dx. So there's a 3x for the upper limit on the first integral. That's going to be just fine. We're going to still follow the same patterns where we focus on the inner integral, which is dy. So we're going to focus on the y's. And once that's simplified, we'll go to the outer integral, which is dx. So the inner integral, since we're integrating with respect to y, is y cubed times 1 third. And the x stays along like a constant. And we're integrating from 0 to 3x. And these are our y values, still surrounded by the integral from 0 to 2 dx. We're ignoring that part. We're going to replace y with 3x and 0 then. So we have 1 third x times the y is 3x cubed minus 0 cubed, surrounded by the integral from 0 to 2 dx. So just like before, when we plugged in for y the number, now we're plugging in for y the 3x. Nothing really different other than that. Subtracting 0 cubed, that's nice because that's 0. So let's simplify and say we've got 1 third x times 3 cubed is 27 x cubed. Still inside the integral from 0 to 2 dx. And let's move horizontally. 27 divided by 3 is 9 x to the fourth. And that is inside the integral from 0 to 2 of dx. Now that we've completely simplified the first integral, we respond by doing the second integral. x to the fourth becomes x to the fifth. Divided by the new exponent, we get 9 fifths integrated from 0 to 2 or 9 fifths times 2 to the fifth minus 0 to the fifth. Well, 2 to the fifth is 32, and 32 times 9 is 288 over 5 for our final solution. Let's try one more so we can really get some practice with plugging variables in. Let's do the integral from 0 to 2 of the integral from negative y to 0 of e to the x minus y dx dy. This time, the inner integral is a dx. So x is my variable. We'll evaluate dx before we even worry about the outer integral dy. So e to the x minus y, its antiderivative is e to the x minus y, dividing by the derivative of x, which is just 1. And that's going to be integrated from negative y to 0 equal to my x values. And that's still all inside the integral from 0 to 2 dy. Plugging these values in for x, we end up with e to the 
0 minus y minus e to the, plugging the y in, negative y minus y. And that's all still inside the integral from 0 to 2 dy. Simplifying, we have e to the negative y minus e to the negative 2y. And all of that is inside the integral from 0 to 2 dy. Well, now that's been simplified as much as possible. So let's move to taking the dy integral. The antiderivative of e to the negative y is e to the negative y divided by a negative 1, minus the antiderivative of e to the negative 2y is e to the negative 2y divided by negative 2, making it plus 1 half. And now we integrate from 0 to 2. Plugging 2 in, we get negative e to the negative 2 plus 1 half e to the negative 2 times 2. And then we change the signs and plug in the lower limit, giving us plus e to the negative 0 minus 1 half e to the negative 2 times 0. That gives us negative e to the negative 2 plus 1 half e to the negative 4 plus e to the 0 is 1 minus 1 half e to the 0 is 1. And so a little bit of simplifying just at the end. 1 minus 1 half gives us our final answer of negative e to the negative 2 plus 1 half e to the negative 4 and 1 minus 1 half is plus 1 half. And we have our final solution. So what do we use these double integrals for anyways? Well, just like we said, a single integral gave us the area under a curve. Double integrals have an important application also. A double integral is the volume under a surface. We now have the way to calculate the volume of various shapes. For example, we can find the volume under f of x comma y is equal to x plus y where 0 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 2, and 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3. What those numbers at the end give us is our limits of integration, the rectangle that we're cutting out of this x plus y shape. So we are doing a double integral of x plus y. And it doesn't matter if we do the dx or the dy first. Let's do dx dy. And since I said dx first, the first integral needs to be the x limits from 0 to 3. And because I said dy second, the second integral is going to be the y limits from 0 to 2. And that gives me the integral I can use to find that volume. When y goes from 0 to 2, x goes from 0 to 3, what's underneath x plus y? How much stuff is there? Again, we've got our two integrals. And this is going to solve in much the same way. Focusing first on the internal integral, x is our variable. So the antiderivative of x is x squared times a half plus y is a constant. The antiderivative of a constant is just that constant times x integrated from 0 to 3. And remember, we did dx, so that's actually equal to the x. And yes, we're still integrating from 0 to 2 dy. 
Plugging the values in, we have 1 half times x, which is 3 squared minus 0 squared, plus y times x, which is 3 minus 0. And that's still integrated from 0 to 2 dy. Simplifying 3 squared is 9. We end up with 9 halves plus 3 times y integrated from 0 to 2 dy. Now that we've simplified that inner integral all the way, we move to the outer integral. This gives us 9 halves y plus a y squared divided by 2 gives us 3 halves integrated from 0 to 2. Let's plug those values in. We have 9 halves times the y, which is 2 minus 0, plus 3 halves times the y squared, 2 squared minus 0 squared. Well, 2 minus 0 is 2, reduces out with the 2, leaves behind 9. Plus 2 squared is 4, reducing with the 2, leaves behind 2. 2 times 3 is 6. 9 plus 6 is 15. So the entire volume under x plus y between 0 and 2 and 0 and 3 is 15 cubic units. We can actually use this idea of volume and extend it on to variable limits. Let's find the volume under f of xy equals 4y e to the x, where 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to y. And 0 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 1. To find a volume, we're going to do a double integral of our function, 4y e to the x. We have to decide on our order. Now, in the first example, the order did not matter. We could have done it either way, and the work might have looked a little different, but we'd get the same answer. This time, though, the x's have a limit that's based on y. It's not just a number. Because x is constrained by y, we have to do the dx first, going from 0 to y. So that when we do the outside one from 0 to 1, dy, we end up with just numbers in our final solution. Otherwise, you'll have variables, and that won't work. So if we're limited by a variable limit, that one has to come first. All right. Let's take a look at this inner integral. It's dx, so x is our variable. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. 4y is just a constant. And we're integrating from 0 to y is equal to our x values. So that x is going to be replaced from 0 to y. Don't forget, we're still integrating from 0 to 1 dy. We're just not thinking about that yet. So we have 4y times e to the y minus e to the 0. And again, that's still integrated from 0 to 1 dy. Well, e to the 0 is just 1. So let's go ahead and distribute that 4y through. So we end up with 4y e to the y minus e to the 0 is 1, 4y. And that's inside the integral from 0 to 1 dy. Well, this integral, the left half is a lot more involved than the right half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into two integrals. We'll do the left integral and just subtract the right integral. That way, on the left integral, we can solve it using the correct method. Substitution won't work, but you do notice it's a product. In products, we found out a couple videos ago, we could do with integration by parts, where we make u and dv. 
Well, if we think about our lay, the algebra comes before the exponential. So we'll make 4y equal to the u and e to the y dy the dv. So du is 4 dy. And the v, the antiderivative of e to the y, is just e to the y. Using our formula, then, u times v is 4y e to the y minus the integral from 0 to 1 of v du. Bring the 4 out, e to the y dy. And we still have at the end, we kind of ignored this part, minus the integral of 4y dy. It hasn't gone away. We just needed to use the integration by parts to break down the first one. Now we can simplify the rest of this. This is 4y e to the y minus 4 e to the y minus antiderivative of a y is y squared. Divide by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And we're integrating this entire thing from 0 to 1. So plugging in 1, we've got 4 times 1 e to the first minus 4 e to the first minus 2 times 1 squared. Subtract, plugging the lower limit in, minus 4 times 0 e to the 0 plus, changing the sign, 4 e to the 0 plus 2 times 0 squared. And as we simplify, the 1's multiplying by 0 go away. And so we have 4e minus 4e minus 2 plus 4 times e is 4, which means our final answer, 4e minus 4e is 0. And negative 2 plus 4 gives us a final volume of 2 cubic units. So integrating with several integrals, specifically with double integrals, is where most of our emphasis is going to be. Uh, double integrals, we take a look at the inner integral first, keeping track of which variable we're integrating with respect to treating the other variable as a constant. And then we can move to the outside integral to calculate our final solution. These take a very careful work, showing your work clearly, not losing track of where you're going so you don't get your variables mixed up. The integration is easy, so practice that on the assignment today, keeping track of what we're integrating with respect to. What's the constant? What order do we do things in? Practice them. We'll see you in class to answer questions and work with these a little more.